Well, thanks to a pressing campaign calendar and back-to-back -back snowstorms, the General Assembly is under the gun to get things done. We know that one House already today passed the big budget in what feels like record time. But what about other key legislative issues? We're just past the halfway point of the 2014 session. Time for a status check. We're on the story. Welcome to On the Story Lawmakers Edition. It's Monday, February 17th, day 22 of the 2014 session of the Georgia General Assembly. I'm Bill Nygut. And I'm Bobby Batista, but who's counting? <laughs> we are, though, just past the midpoint of this session in a year when lawmakers are in a lather to get finished and get on with campaigning. So what issues are getting their attention and is anything important at risk of getting left behind? But before we turn to that conversation, let's check in with our Capitol reporters to see what's happening under the goal Dome. Paul Yates joins us live. Paul? Well, good evening, Bill. State House leaders are entering the debate on expansion of Medicaid in Georgia. They want to assert lawmakers' authority on the issue. Several dozen people rallied outside the Capitol today to support bills aimed at blocking implementation of the Affordable Care Act. The 2010 Atlanta Press Club Debates, brought to you live from Georgia Public Broadcasting. Now, the race for governor. Good evening, I'm John Pruitt, news anchor for WSB-TV in Atlanta. We would like to welcome our viewers, our listeners on GPB Radio, and our live studio audience to the 2010 Atlanta Press Club debate series originating from the studios of GPB. Now, this is the debate involving the candidates for governor of Georgia. So let's meet those candidates. They are in alphabetical order. Roy Barnes, the Democratic candidate. He's been a partner in a law firm for more than 30 years and was governor of Georgia from 1998 to 2002. Nathan Deal, the Republican candidate, served 18 years in the U.S. House of Representatives from 1992 to 2010. And you turned to her and said, I don't have to explain to you what solicitation is, do you? Do you think that was an appropriate remark? And do you believe that you should offer an apology to Senator Steinberg? Let me get this right, Roy. <laughs> You're asking me about a comment that was made 18 years ago? Uh, you know, when you were running for governor in 1998 and Lewis Massey was asking you questions about votes that you made, you said anybody who would reach back by 20 years and uh, ask about votes and things of that nature are simply a desperate candidate trying to sling mud. Welcome to Football Fridays in Georgia here on Georgia Public Broadcasting. Tonight, we're live in Powder Springs. Tonight, it's the semifinals of the GHSA playoffs. And tonight, it's the Bulldogs of North Gwinnett taking on the Indians of McEachern. Plus, talk about love of the game. Just ahead, you'll meet a woman whose life is all about Friday Night Lights. She's not only married to the head coach, her son is a quarterback. And the professors are back with our chalk, as you can tell. It's been a dramatic couple weeks for both of these teams, and we'll tell you what they did to get here tonight. That's coming up on the extra point. A ticket to the championship game in the Georgia Dome is on the line tonight. The all-access pass pregame show is coming up next, live on GPB. Hi again, everyone, and welcome to Football Fridays in Georgia's All Access Pass. At the start of the playoffs, 192 teams had dreams of making it to the Georgia Dome and playing for a state championship. Last week, Griffin knocked off Sandy Creek. Right now, they're at the top of the ladder when it comes to Quad A. How does head coach Steve Dvorsny get past that big win and get ready for Wayne County? We went to Griffin to ask him. They're 15, 16, 17-year-old kids, but uh, you know, you got to move on. You know, that, that didn't finish our season or what we're, you know, that ain't what we started out to do. Thomas County Central getting on the board. Adam Choice breaking the record for Thomas County Central's career yardage mark over 5,000. So let's go to Waynesboro show you the highlights. No punt, no pass, no problem. Last week it was the Chase Martinson show, and you're going to see he had 18 carries in the night, 160 yards, but four of his 18 carries were for touchdowns. Football fans of a certain age may not remember the exact date. It was November 17th. 
1968, but they do remember the controversy. GPB's Bruce Burkhardt has more on this TV NFL controversy and the Gainesville connection. It was one of the biggest debacles in the history of televised sports. It involved a hotly contested Sunday afternoon game between the New York Jets and Oakland Raiders, played in Oakland. Both teams were in top form, and the scoreboard was in constant seesaw motion as the teams kept scoring against each other. The lead changed back and forth six times before the score was finally tied at 29 all. Then the Jets' Jim Turner kicked a 26-yard field goal and the Jets had the lead with one minute, five seconds left. Meanwhile, NBC had been heavily promoting a kid's movie, Heidi, that was airing at 7 p.m. No one had ever considered what might happen if the football game ran long. Oakland scored two touchdowns in the last nine seconds of the game, including a touchdown made by Gainesville High alum Preston Reidelhuber, who recovered a Jets fumble in the end zone. He's the one wearing number 37. We should mention that football fans weren't alone in their fury. All the irate calls finally caused NBC's switchboard to blow up. The network took a major shellacking in the press for days and weeks afterward, and it quickly changed policy to let all football games finish before moving to other programs. To this day, Heidi is probably still a bad word at 30 Rock. 1942, 1978, and now 2013, three state champs for the Griffin Bears. And now over to Claire and the GPB tailgate party. Thank you so much, Mark. A lot of excited fans here in the Georgia Dome. Six games down. We have six on the books. We have one more big matchup ahead. It is going to be a big one. So here's a look back at some of the top moments of the year. Here we go. Guess who? I Guess don't who? think they kept him in front of him. Look at this. Unbelievable. Burris, 94 yards. Schuster will throw and try to get off the snide. He's got a guy deep. It's Cortez Hall, and it's picked up by Jay Stackhouse. He's at the 40-yard line down the far sideline and has a host of blockers in front of him. 10-5, touchdown, North Gornet, Jay Stackhouse on the pick six.